So today we are going to learn how to do basic animations in 3CS by using the use render loop composable available on the core package. In the previous video we managed to create our first scene using 3CS and adding a cube to it. Also we managed to put it a new material called normal material as well as playing around with the transfer props like rotation, position and scale. But we have one problem with our cube, and is that it's just sit there sadly um, boring without doing anything. So we are going to change that. We are going to animate our cube. But before we do that, let me explain you how animation works in general. Here we have an example of how frame by frame animation work. We have a character from a Street Fighter series that is doing an upper up attack. So the first image is the uh, uh, character doing a stance to prepare the attack and then moving up until it goes back to the previous one. So what is going to happen is that the camera that is showing all the images is going to trick our eye. It's going to make us believe that it's a smooth video or a smooth animation, but in fact it's a series of images that are moving so fast that our eye think is a continuous flow. So that's exactly the effect that we want to achieve. And that's where frames per second topic comes to play. So frames per second is basically how many images are you showing in a second to make sure that the eyes see it as a moving image. Here is a visual example of how it changed from a, a frames per second 15 to a 60 frame per second, which is the one that we are gonna have on our scene. You're gonna see that you have a space for more images in between, making the animation smoother. Why is this so important? Because the performance of our scene is gonna be measured by the frames per second that is rendered. Otherwise, you might find yourself with something like this. We don't want that. Okay, so let's jump now to the fun part. First, I'm going to explain you how animation works in 3GS, and then we're going to see how 3GS make it easy. Here, I'm going to create a render, and then new WebGL render from 3GS. Okay, and what you normally do is that if you want to render one frame, you're going to do render, render, and you're going to pass the scene and the camera. Okay? So this is going to render one frame. If we want to do it several times, every time uh, the browser refresh rate, which is 60 frames per second, you're going to use request animation frame. So what you normally have is a loop. So const loop or animation or tick. Okay. There are several names. And inside of it, you're going to do whatever you want to do. So you're going to uh, render the scene, for example. And then you're going to do request animation frame. And you're going to pass loop. So what is this is going to do is that it's going to uh, call the render 60 times per second. In my case, I think my display is 120 frames per second. But... You don't have to worry about that because, because TrustYS does that for you. So you can use the animation frame that is available on TrustYS Core by using the composable use render loop. This use render loop is going to have a function inside our method called on loop. So you can access to it like this. This on loop is going to be the callback of the request animation frame, like this. So before we continue, I added uh, something new here. Uh, I added a FPS, or frame per second graph, that give us the current uh, frames per second. I don't know why it's fluctuating a lot right now. Maybe it's because I'm recording the screen, I don't know. But uh, it should be around 120 frames per second. The first thing that will come to our mind is to do the following. So we want to animate this cube rotation into axis. So what we can do is pass an array here. And let's say that we want to rotate on the Y and the theta axis. So the zero on the X axis. And then we are going to create a rotation 
Y and a rotation C then. And here let's create our variables. So it's gonna be const. Let me remove this part so we can see a little bit better. So it's gonna be rotation y equal to ref and we're gonna set it to zero. So let's import this one and we're gonna copy and paste it for the zeta axis. Okay, so we have these two and the first thing that we are gonna come up to is probably uh, modify this, right? So we're gonna say uh, rotation y dot value plus equal to increase and let's put a, a, a really small number because this has been triggered a lot, okay? We're gonna do something similar with the uh, theta one, but we are gonna put like 0 0.2. If we refresh, we're gonna see now that our cube is being rotating uh, correctly, okay? Um, here is not visible because we have a really simple scene and it's only a cube, but this is not the preferred way to animate stuff because this is using view reactivity and view reactivity is based on proxies which are not as performant as plain objects. So right now it looks good, it's around 120 frames per second but if your scene is more complicated than this it could get like Pokemon. It's cool that like the new reference for low uh, frames per second is Pokemon. Okay, so what is the preferred way of doing this? Instead of creating reference for the rotation, we're gonna remove the rotation here and we're gonna use template refs. So let's remove this here, this here. And what we are gonna do is create a new const called cube ref and we're gonna set it to shallow ref. Shallow ref is like the more performant uh, variant of the reference, okay, or the reactivity, because it's only reacting in the first layer. Then we're gonna pass this to our mesh by using ref. So this is gonna be cube ref like this. Now, in, uh, we need to import this, I think. Okay, let me refresh so we have the cube still. And then inside of the loop, we're gonna ask if we have a value for the cube ref. If not, we are not interested. So what the uh, template ref is gonna give you is basically the 3 yes instance that is created on the scene. So we can access it. Let's put here a console log. Actually, I'm not gonna put it here because it's gonna do a lot of console logs and that becomes really bad. So I'm going to use a watch effect to show you what does it return. So here I'm going to do console log. Okay. And I'm going to log the cube ref. Okay. So I'm going to open the dev tools here. So I'm going to do here. And you're going to see that the object, if we go to the value, it's exactly the mesh that is created with the geometry, the box geometry, and the mesh normal material. So this template ref right here is giving us the actual 3GS instance that has been created by the custom render. So what we're going to do is animate this object because this is a plain object. So here is the rotation and we can do if the cube ref value is available, cube ref dot value dot rotation. We are gonna choose the rotation, so it's gonna be x plus equal. Actually, we selected y before, right? So let's use the same one, 0 0.01. And if we refresh, it's now being rotated. Also, we're gonna do the same, but for the theta value. And we're gonna put it like this. So we refresh, and now it's rotating in both of them. This version is way more smooth than the previous one. Also, the frames per second is gonna be more stable if you use this approach. We can use uh, values like this, 
But there is a better way of doing this, and it's because the on loop triggers a callback that is returning two parameters, which is the delta and elapse it. So delta is basically the time between the previous frame and the current frame. So it's going to be a really small number, and we can use it here with the plus equal. If we click save, we're going to see that the animation is correct. This is better because if we have a constant value here, this is not getting affected by the frames per second rate. On the other hand, the delta, it is affected by the number. So it's going to be way smoother if you use the delta rather than using a plain number because it's going to be adapted to the frames per second that you have on your scene. The lab set works in a similar way, but the lab set is the time not between the previous frame and this one, but since the beginning. So if we use the lab set, it's already accumulating the values, so we don't need to use a plus sign here. If we click Save, we're going to see now that the cube is rotating correctly. Here is where the fun part begins, because you can use a lot of math to animate your scenes as you want. So yeah, I'm talking about math, and you will be surprised how useful things that you use in school will be here. So. The first thing that I use a lot is trigonometry, and I'm going to copy and paste this here. We're going to change the position in the y-axis, and we're going to use a math scene wave, and we're going to pass the lab set, and we're going to multiply the lab set by 2, so it's faster. Now you're going to see that the cube position in the y-axis oscillates same as a sine wave will do. We can do something similar with the scale, for example. So let's use cube ref dot value dot scale set. And then I think I can pass an array. I don't remember. We're going to use this one as well. Pass it with commas. So let's see if this one works. No. It, it doesn't. <laughs> Maybe I have to pass a, a, a vector like this. Let's check if this one works. So yeah, it works. So you can use it to create this kind of cool effects like um, changing the position, the rotation, and the scale of it. And that Chamos y Chamas is how you can animate any object in your scene by using the use render loop composable available on 3SGS. If you want to learn more about 3SGS, make sure you don't miss the follow-up videos in this series about basics on 3SGS to learn more about it. Do not miss any of them, subscribe, drop a like. Also, we are going to drop some interesting resources on the description below. Happy coding!